Okay, we may as well uh, get going. Um, welcome to uh, today's um, Public Transport Information Coordination Group. Um, hope that you're all well. Um, so uh, I'm Tim Rivett, I'm the chair of this group. Um, and we've got uh, Teresa online who does the uh, minutes and things like that for us. So thank you in advance, Teresa. Um, we've got apologies from Mira Nayara at the uh, at the department. Um, but I've not had any more from anybody else. Um, don't know whether you've had any, Teresa. No. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so um, the last time we met as a group was the 23rd of July. Hopefully you've all had um copies of um this um i can't remember whether we'd moved to the new email distribution list before the last meeting or yeah i think i sent it out to the new one um i hope everyone's got it if not maybe we should send them to both i don't know <laughs> is anyone well, the, the other one doesn't exist anymore Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had to move. And we'll we'll come on to 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 why Travel Line Southeast's um, email list doesn't exist anymore later. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully people have got the minutes. If not, they're on the website. Um, so if we if people shout out if there's any matters of accuracy, if we've got anything wrong. Um, I'll go through and pick up actions. Um, the first actions were around BODS um, and the BODS issue list. Um, people can submit issues um, to me um, and I'll then um, make sure they get onto the list for um, discussion inclusion. I have to say um, it's been extremely quiet um, from PTIC members. Um, not had, um, I think we had two things from people. Um, I'm sure there are more issues. Um, if It's a useful way to, uh, to, to raise the profile of issues that you've got. Um, and uh, and get them uh, in front of the uh, of the department and the bods team so i would encourage you to um send issues through um then um we've got an update um to the list um and we'll look at that later on the agenda so that's mirrors action then stop announcement name um we had volunteers and we met and there's a paper um and hopefully we can have a good discussion about that in a bit um and then uh, there was an action for me to put the Surrey vm profile slides and document onto websites um, I will do that as soon as um, it is released for publication, uh, which is imminent, but that's covering one of the agenda items. So we'll take that off. Um, they were the actions. Um, anybody want to raise anything from those minutes? No. Okay um so bus open data service um we're heading towards the end of the year when um 
supplying data to it will be mandatory. Um, I had been hoping that we were going to have an update from somebody in Mira's absence, um, but I'm not sure there's anybody from the team that's joined, or if they did, then they're just about to leave, probably. Um, <laughs> no, right, okay, so Trans Exchange Profile, you've had um, copies of that version one document um, for quite a while now, so hopefully you're all familiar with that. Um, there is a um, slightly revised version that clarifies some of the questions that people have had um, and addresses some of the formatting issues that is going to be released imminently. Um, I don't know quite when it will be, um, but it's uh, it's not going to be uh, very long um, before that comes out <coughs> and I'll make sure that's circulated. Um, at the moment, BODS is accepting trans exchange in um, pretty much whatever version 2.1 format that you can supply it. Um, there are a number of known issues. Um, they are, the, the biggies are on the issues list, I'm sure. Things like ex expiry dates are a big problem. Um, and um, if you try and um, put a whole um, major operator's region's worth of data in in one go, then it uh, has to gulp a bit um, and has a bit of a problem. Um, but is there anything that people want to raise about the trans exchange profile? Yeah, Tim, David from Texter. Yeah. Can we just say that we, we are still waiting for the release of the last bit and with all the other things being delayed, it is pushing us close to the limit where we might be suggesting that perhaps BODs ought to be able to accept non 2.4 trans exchange for a bit longer. Um, is When you say you're waiting for the release of the last bit, is that your development or a BODs development or? Well, we're hoping that the the clarification Stuart's going to provide will have some bit more about versioning and one or two other bits. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, I will um, give them a push to uh, to find out and encourage them to uh, to get that released because I know that Stuart has um, provided an update, um, but I know it was going into the uh, the formatting queue and things like that, um, yeah. which we're, is why it's also, imminent. Sorry, but, we're uh, also aware that they had a, a meeting with the suppliers, uh, software suppliers, and obviously until anybody releases one. We can't test import it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a catch-22 at the moment, isn't it, for 2.4? Tim, do you know whether the DFT spreadsheet tool is compliant with the PTI profile yet, or whether it will be in time? Uh, I don't know to both of those. Um, I know the, <laughs> the, the version I've played with, which was the last one was about June or something that I think I saw um, was 2.1. Um, 
but yeah, there's a lot. a lot in the new um, profile that's going to make it a bit tricky to do it from Excel, it seems. Um, is that something we can push the DFT for a, an update on? Uh, yeah, 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 we can cert okay. I'll certainly, uh, certainly ask. Um, I didn't think, though, that there was anything that was particularly difficult in there um, for a basic route. I'm thinking more about the versioning requirements, um, the revision numbering, all that sort of stuff. Um, and if you're doing things one off on a spreadsheet, then obviously you don't know what revision number it was last time necessarily, um, unless you've kept all your old documents. And just seems to be a slight conflict between the DFT's tool and the requirements in the profile. Yeah, yeah. Are we okay. saying then, Tim, that it can, is there any organisation that's actually produced uh, TransExchange 2.4, this latest version, um, export yet? I mean, we've obviously we have a supplier that we use uh, at Lancashire, and they've got a commercial proposition, but just listening to what David Batchelor said, I'm just wondering, are there any organisations out there who can actually produce it yet? I mean, three months before the uh, the deadline. Um, Mark, I know you're working um, on a compliant version in Omni. Um, no, wrong Mark, sorry. Um, mm, Omni are working on one and expecting to release it this month. Um, from the last that I came up with from them. Um, Ticket are obviously a little way um, away needing some clarification. Um, we got anybody from Trapeze? Yeah, Paul. Paul in the Trapeze, have you got any <laughs> intelligence? Uh, so, um, in our local authority business, we we're probably about what you said for Omni, which is um, uh, developed, being tested and out this month. Um, I can't talk for our operator teams. I don't have an update from them. So that would be Stagecoach and Reaver, I think, would, would uh, export from those. I know they are probably submitting too, but that's probably in 2.1 at the moment. Yeah, it is. It is at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, by the sounds of it, the answer, Ian, is is no. Nobody is at the moment, but there's a lot of work going on that suggests it's all going to be imminent. Yes, there is. Yeah. I mean, we were on a, a call the other day. Well, when the uh, DFT team did the the uh, the bod stuff for a um, for somebody acting uh, as a bureau type service, so. You know, we, we picked up bits there, but, you know, as I think Rob, uh, Rob's just said and Dave actually, it's very difficult to see how it can get all be implemented and done for the 7th of January. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to do, I agree. Okay. Tim, sorry, um, um, did I read somewhere, and I can't remember, it might have been a DFT bulletin that came out that it was... 20 something operators signed up at the moment or so it, it felt like quite a low number given um how close we are and you know the 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 format of trans exchange that you're able to submit shouldn't be a barrier so it it, it felt like there was something else going on as to why there were so few operators signed up at this point um yeah you're right i'm just looking for the number but uh, there was one in the last uh, open data update uh, a week ago. Um, quality fares update, business change. Uh, 27 operators, four out of the big five. Um, so I've got no idea what proportion of services that covers, but it's going to be 
seventy percent probably if they've got four out of the big five. Yeah. Um, as always, it's the long tail of the smaller guys that um, always proves the uh, 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 the hard work, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but the the, the likes of uh, ticketer and passenger, I guess, when they've got um, data in for their customers, and that that so they should they should be quite a fast ramp. Once, um, once people have got proper exports, we've, we've probably, the... sorry, at Ticketer, we've probably got more than twenty customers signed up for our set for, from our system. Um, we've got a few that are still waiting because they haven't been given Bods accounts yet. Um, but I think twenty seven is a bit on the low side. Yeah, uh, I was just going on their last update, so yeah, I'll I'll try and get a an updated figure from somebody. Um, I feel the phone line will be hot immediately after this. So, um, okay, is there anything more on the Trans Exchange profile? Quite hard without uh, DFT. Um, the Siri VM profile. Um, you've had the key fields for a good few months now. Um, the profile document um, is going to be released again imminently. Um, the the web page version of it is going through spell checking and um, QA by the uh, by the DFT web team as we speak so um, I know a bit more about where that is in the in the pipeline so um, that really is imminent if it's not this week then it should be early next week um, pending any um, lockdowns where we all have to go away and hide and aren't allowed to do any work and things like that um but uh that is in the uh in the final um qa stages before publishing um so uh, so that's 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 imminent um and again there's quite a lot of operators supplying data in um vm um format already i don't know whether anybody's um been able to um get access to any of it and consume it in their test mode because I know they've let some people access it already. Don't know whether anybody's got any feedback on on the output. Hi Tim. That's Alex from Passenger. Um yeah we've taken some of that beta data and it's gone into our system fine. So it works as as expected. Um, the only question I have around the profile it's not necessarily the profile but it's probably more the frequency of data is there going to be anything that's going to be written about how frequent the data should be available i know this is a contentious issue um but is it going to be like a minimum requirement from the government that say you know you must provide your data within you know 10 second time frame or something or similar um so uh, the requirement is that you're going to have to provide um updates at least every 30 seconds um with a maximum of um 10 second updates um just to uh just to keep data volumes at a uh, at a sensible level um and if your vehicle is uh if you've got no vehicles running then your heartbeat is going to have to be every 30 seconds to maintain the series subscription just as, a, as an addition to that, was there any real reason why an upper limit was, or sorry, a, a maximum was put on it? Because I mean, from a from a customer experience perspective, ten seconds below that would be would be ideal. I'm not quite sure why it was legislated that it should be, you know, maximum ten. Surely that makes no sense. And I don't know if anyone's got had previous discussions on that, but that's a limitation in tech rather than a limit. You know, something should have gone into the the regulation. Um, so it's not. It's it's in guidance, not in regulation. 
to the regulation just says you've got to supply it in Siri VM. So all of this is in guidance and can be um, relatively easily changed. Um, <laughs> the, the, the approval wheels run slow, um, but uh, but don't need parliamentary time or anything like that. Um, the the that's limit, that's as I understand it, is a is a is a balance of cost and um, um, capacity at the moment. Okay. Nick. I think that the point is from the user experience point of view, we've got to have a drive on this because, um, yeah, historically there were costs. I believe those are being driven down. And the shorter the interval, the more we can deal with the horrible issues like clear down. If I think of one of the most frustrating things, it is to get to a bus stop panting, out of breath, worried as to whether or not one's going to make the bus from the train. And you see due and you think, oh, oh, thank goodness. Because that is simply because it didn't clear down. So the, the finer the resolution of this, the better the user experience. And it, it's sad, really, that it's taking so long to drive user experience into into this as opposed to just thinking about well it might cost a bit more which it used to but i don't believe it really does as much as it did um you know technology's moved on but inshallah these things will change end of rant yeah. T 10 seconds is a lot better than uh than, than 30 so uh, <laughs> we get it there. <laughs> If you miss a packet, then uh, it's it's nowhere near as uh, bad a problem as if it's every thirty <laughs> seconds. So, you know. <laughs> very true. We'll we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. Um. So that's that's good. People are consuming it. Um. And um. As I say, the profile is really really close to being, um, published. Um. Any questions on that? Any comments? Um, one comment, Tim. Um, on the profile, is that, and my understanding is, from what we've been told, is that sort of guidance of what ideally we should be provide, but it's not a requirement for the January deadline as long as we're providing a VM feed. Is that correct? Uh, so I'm getting messages from different people. Technically, from 7th of January or whenever it is, it's it's a requirement um, and it'll need to be the new profile. Um, but in practice, um, I think given where we are, if people are providing it in in something that that bears enough of a resemblance, then um, nobody's going to get too upset to start with um, the, the the challenge and the bit that. I know some people that are that have been talking about providing data in have is block ref and um some of those that are really important for um matching data with the trans exchange to to create the predictions um and so um i think that's where the the pressure will come um if people aren't um supplying it with that in it which is the key bits of the profile really um is to, is to enable that easy matching and so the the better generation of predictions okay thanks that kind of clears it up a bit for me hmm. okay um in which case um fares um and it's probably worth um for this um getting richard mason from transport for the north to uh to do his update given that a lot of what he's doing is all about fares so richard you're on a somewhere aren't you yeah you are yes hello tim have you got the slides tim you want, are you able to yep yeah, i can present 
I wouldn't even attempt to try and present on the on go to. I've not done that before. <laughs> as, as ever, it's it's nice and easy until it's not. <laughs> Well, Steve Penn's on the call as well. So uh, Steve's, uh, as, you, as most of you know, Steve's uh, super helpful. Any any questions that we get. Um, but uh, while Tim is just, oh, there we go. So yeah, I've, I've just put together a couple of slides just to, um, I'm sure Tim will circulate those uh, these slides uh, to everyone um, as well. So you've got that. But I guess, firstly, just thank you for the opportunity for us to uh, provide an update on where we are with our FAIRS data build tool. So just to uh, to recap, and apologies for those who already know, um, the TFM FAIRS tool is supporting operators to create some simple FAIRS information in the NetEx format. And obviously this is in line with the legislative requirement uh, which kicks in uh, from January 21. So our uh, TFN role um, is to deliver a tool for DFT to then take on and roll out nationally. So I guess in terms of um, delivery, um, we are in a, uh, we have an agreed product roadmap with DFT, which runs up to the 11th of December um, uh, 2020. We've recently agreed that with DFT in the last few months. Um, so where we are right now is we are currently in the private beta phase. Um, delivery is in a good place, and we're, we're sort of delivering against that planned uh, roadmap. Uh, and we are on track to hand the tool over to, Z to DFT uh, in December. Uh, in particular, um, we've completed features to capture dating and validity, validity rules, uh, sales offer packages, uh, and to enable LTAs to register and create NetEx uh, on behalf of operators. We've also under undertaken PEN and accessibility testing, um, and we've had some re remediation works what, uh, which needed to be completed. Um, we have an accessibility retest this week with DAC um, to ensure we achieve the required AA accessibility rating. Um, so, like I say, strong progress has been made with DFT in recent months. Uh, we've confirmed the governance requirements for the tool to be onboarded to the DFT estate um, in December. So, we've got something called an architectural change board, uh, which is a DFT governance uh, step that we need to go through. Uh, so, we'll, we'll go through that later this month. Um, and we've also started dialogue with a DFT commercial team uh, on the operating model beyond the 11th of December. Um, so as you recall, uh, which we've mentioned previously, uh, just to recap, the, the key requirement for DFT to take on the FAIRS data build tool is for the tool to meet the GDS uh, service standard. Uh, so we have our GDS uh, assessment uh, penciled in the diary for the 28th of October. Um, and basically we've been having uh, for mock assessments uh, with the GDS assessors in the run-up to to that. Um, they've all now completed. We've had the feedback, uh, which has been helpful, I guess, in bringing us uh, comfort that we're on the right track. Uh, we're still meeting with the GDS team on a regular basis, uh, providing demos uh, and updates accordingly. Um, so I guess in terms of wider uh, stakeholder work, so we start to share the NetEx files with data consumers. Uh, obviously, that's to help support data integration from next year. Um, we've also been meeting with uh, various operators and uh, multi-operator ticket uh, scheme providers um, to help shape our uh, multi-operator ticketing uh, feature. Um, and also, we're supporting DFT, uh, Mira in particular, with the uh, ETM supply working group that, so that Mira chairs. I guess that's really to drive consistency of application of NetEx across the industry. Um, so I guess key activities that are coming up for us, um, so it's the completion of the multi-operator ticket feature, and the next big feature really is for uh, school service tickets. Um, and obviously then we have the architectural change board later this month, and then the, um, the GDS service assessment uh, later in October as well. Um, so I guess that's the, that's the key update that I'd like to just provide people. So if anyone's got any questions, then feel free to ask. I can't guarantee I'll, ask, I'll be able to answer the question, but Steve, Steve, Steve certainly will. Any questions? Anybody? Cool. Just a, a quick one then on that. You mentioned the school fair uh system there within the uh, tfn tool but the school services 
if they they don't have to be in the bods at all, do they? Only if once you get to two point four, you can put up a, them as a register as a closed service. But will they re, be required to have the fares in there as well? Steve, do you want to pick that up around the, the that, that particular feature? Well, I think you know, from my perspective, there's still a bit of uncertainty around what is required as far as school services, because obviously. School passes can be sold for them to travel on buses that are registered on bold to school children boards because they're not exclusive to school children. So we've got to build the functionality to allow products for school services to be defined. So that's what we're doing. Um, you know, it's really just to, we've not ex received explicit guidance, but I've thrown it in the in the roadmap just to cover that off. Okay, thanks. I've got a quick question. Um... And I should probably say, just in reference to a much earlier agenda point, I'm looking at some data that was sent to me from the, the ODF tool from DFT, and it does completely adhere to the um, the PTI profile, the final proposal that Stuart Reynolds put forward. So it seems like the ODF tool is producing that standard of data. I know that's not on topic. But... Oh, it's very useful, though. Uh, on, with the uh, delivery on the 11th of December, is that a go live or is that hand it over to the DFT and then they've got to get it on their infrastructure to then go live for operators to upload their own data before the January deadline? We, we would expect to be in public beta prior to that handover. Um, obviously, the handover we just DFT's AWS environment from our own. Okay. So, you know, uh, operators should, should be able to register in November. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions for Richard or Stephen? No? Okay. Fair enough. Sounds like you're waiting for something. <laughs> 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 sometimes they're a shy bunch this lot sometimes they're not <laughs> cool thanks guys yeah thank you richard thank you steve um okay um so um i think that probably takes us to the end of the bods um side of things um and we've covered off uh, what TFN are up to, um, key to key to bods and everything that we do, um, are bus stops um, and bus stop data and um, the uh, data team at, uh, at the DFT have been busy over the last uh, little while um, making some uh, some changes and uh, and planning for for updates to NATAN. Um, so we've got. Adrian, uh, yeah, Adrian's on. Um, Adrian Falconer from the DFT, who offered to give us an update on uh, the the plans uh, and what's happened over the last um, few weeks with Naptan. Hi, Tim. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I think you've. you've might have sprung that one on me, Tim, but I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I'm happy to certainly talk about some of the things that we've been doing recently. Um, I, I might have put a shirt on if I'd known you were going to put me on the spot like that, but it's nice to meet everybody for the first time. Um, thoroughly professional, as I always am. Um, so we, uh, hopefully, some of you may have noticed, we made some changes to the website um, recently. Um, we had a requirement to make sure that we um, you know, the web content and the application that we're using for NAPTAN are um, accessible, so meet uh, WCAG uh, AA accessibility standards. Um, and so we've been working in the background to, to make that transformation, and that went live in the last, you know, bits of it in stages gone live in the last few weeks. Um, we haven't had any huge feedback on it's ruined everyone's lives or it's done anything terrible. So we're hoping that it's been a relatively smooth transformation. But if there are any issues or if you think we've missed anything, then obviously we'd really like to hear from you. That would be really helpful. Um, we're going to look at closing down some of the older websites in the next few weeks. Um, 
there's one that I think goes back to the transport direct days, um, which we, we you know we don't want to continue supporting. Uh, we spoke to the National Archives and they actually archived it two years ago. They thought it was that old already. So we, we kind of we feel like we're on relatively safe ground to, to start to move away from that. Um, and so we'll be doing that in the next few weeks. And then hopefully our attention can um, turn mostly to just looking at redeveloping the NAPTAN, um, primarily focusing on the back end of the NAPTAN service. Um, it might not be that helpful for you at the moment, but from our perspective, it is, um, it's quite difficult to maintain. Um, and you perhaps notice that we have a few problems from time to time and you have to contact us about those. And it's sometimes quite hard for us to fix them. So we are looking to, a, um, to just make that a little bit better and, and to make a, a more stable and secure um, and better working uh, sort of back end of the service. But to do that, we will need to obviously consider the whole, th you know, take a holistic view of the whole thing. And so we will be looking at, what, well, where do we want to be in five years? Where do we want to be in three years? Um, what do we need to do to do that? So we are hoping to be able to consult with with groups like this um, to get feedback on how we how we take things going forward. I'm happy to take any questions on that if you have any. Hi, it's um, Graham Brown from West Yorkshire Combined Authority. Um, we know that the um, NAPTAN site has, has had some updates, and you were saying about mm -hmm. there's an issue. We've been in contact with Sam Fowler now for, for about probably a month or so. Mm -hmm. There has been a problem that seems to have occurred sometime in the summer around July, the July time, where there's any new bus stops that were uploading aren't getting reflected in the NAPTAN database. And equally, quite a lot, a lot of the um, changes that to bus stop names aren't being reflected either. So we do upload on a weekly basis. We're not getting any feedback to say there's anything wrong with the file. And I know Sam and his team, the FT, have been looking into it. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I don't know if any other, any other authority have noticed this, but it was just to raise there's an issue there. We think it seems to us as though it's an upload, but when you do the download the next day, it's as though it possibly a cached. Um, some cash data, and all you get is what was there before June, before sort of June, July time. So I just thought I'd raise it just to make anybody else aware, or if you're aware mm -hmm. of anybody else who's having that sort of issue. We've um, had a couple of new yep. stops added to Naptan recently, and we found they were downloaded fine uh, a couple of days afterwards. We needed to utilise, and that all worked, worked without issue. Okay, no, that's interesting. Um, I'm not familiar with the specifics of the thing, but I'm I'm really happy to pick it up with Sam when I, you know, after this call. I think that is partially the problems that we we sort of come back to that the system isn't that stable; it's quite old, and we we are looking to just build, you know, replace it with a newer system at some point next year, hopefully, because it, it's just it's very difficult for us to maintain it in the, in its current format. Um, well, let me check with Sam to see. I I don't know if there's a um a fix pending or possibly it's dropped off the list, I don't know. Let me let me double check to make sure that we No, that, to be fair, he has replied to this and it, it okay. should work again. So one of our users has actually done an upload, so she's gonna to download tomorrow just to see what's happened, see if anything's there. Yeah. But yeah, let, let us know if, if that hasn't fixed it, then do let us know and we'll continue to look into it. Okay, no worries. I wanted to add that it's just separate here. Um, yes, I'm aware of some of these issues. Uh, of course, you know, we're trying to, to work as much as we can on, on you know, the, this two-headed problem. On one hand, we're trying to develop a new service, and on the other, we're trying to support the old one. Uh, you know, we're trying to do our best in that space, but if things get too long to, uh, to get fixed, please do escalate, and we're more than happy to uh, reprioritize. If this is affecting a large number of local authorities, I mean, we definitely need to look into it. Yeah, I think that was I think that was my only my only concern. I mean, obviously with the data going forward, if if we end up supplying bus stops directly to operators, you may end up getting bus stops in their files which aren't actually in the Naptan database, which I guess look has its own set of issues, which is why it's come up in a, in that case because we have sent it for the journey planner um, with the new stops in, but they've not been able to download them. I was I was going to say that um, I don't know I haven't had time to check whether it's a um, consistent problem but um, downloading um, the CSV um, export well download from Naptan for a specific um, area that seemed to give a, a corrupt zip file whereas if you downloaded it as a XML it was fine 
And similarly, if you downloaded the CSV for the the whole uh, the whole of the country, it was fine as well. Um, so okay. I don't know if there's a problem with CSV downloads um, when you're logged in under an account to to to, to be particularly focus on you know like Leicester for two six nine or something like that. Okay. That no, we, I think we tend to download the um, XMLs, but yeah, it's interesting. Could be. Yeah. So was logging into the application and specifically looking at Leicester, or was it any sort of region just getting that? No, well, I always happened to be downloading Leicester, but I da um, first of all I downloaded the whole the whole the, the whole CSV output for the whole of the country without logging into the Naptan uh, website, and that was fine. But I think to I, I'm not spent I'm not an expert on the Naptan website, but it seemed as though to download just Leicester on its own, you had to log in with your with if you've got an account, which I did. Mm -hmm. Logged in, downloaded the CSV, and the, the zip file was was corrupt. I did it a few times, and it was the same. But downloaded the XML, and the zip file was was fine. Um, oh. So it just seemed to be the CSV version that was problematic. Mm -hmm. we so, to be honest, the, we own to the the problem of uh, having incorrectly put some of the downloads behind the login screen uh, that's definitely been fixed and it, it, it's high priority on the corruption of the zip files if you could send me or adrian in the, say the link you were experiencing the problem with we will have a look uh, it's just that we didn't have much evidence of this because of course it's really very difficult to, to test you know all of the local authorities uh, downloads with a variety of, of you know systems but if you let us know that would be you know something pretty good us and, and <laughs> yeah, certainly, certainly. Will. And, um, Lester, Lester's just had to put some new stops in, so um, uh, well, Lester Shear do it on our behalf, but and that I don't normally access Naptan, so it's kind of I'm I'm not I'm not an expert in it. It's just something I came across the other day, so I, I need to check whether the download will include the new stops, which will which will mm -hmm. test what Graham was just talking about. And uh, yes, yeah, certainly, I'll I'll send through the link um, to yourself. Giuseppe, and um, if, if it's still a problem with the CSV, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd encourage people if they do come across problems with uh, with Naptan or uh, any of the BOD services um, to, to actually um, flag it up um, directly. There's always a, uh, a contact details for the, for the team or a help desk um, contact because uh, People can then uh, get on and address it rather than letting things fester. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like Staffordshire and City have also had uh, had a few uh, problems. So, um, but anyway, um, I'm sure uh, Adrian and Giuseppe will uh, will pick it up and uh, and deal with it. Yeah, and just on to Giuseppe's point about the two heads. Um, my head is the new system, Giuseppe's is the old system. So if you've got any problems, go to him first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's fine, that's fine. I love that then. That's okay. <laughs> um, hi Adrian. I was wondering, is there any plans longer term about um access to updating the Naptan data set? Now I appreciate that it's owned by local authorities. And managed mm -hmm. by them, but is there any plans in terms of at least um, some kind of process where we can figure out which local authorities are responsible for which stops? Um, because often we end up with data that's probably in sometimes better than the Naptan data set because it's come directly from the operator through Trans Exchange, or there may be some um, user feedback that we've had about a particular bus stop. Is there a way or a process that we could look at where we could? Want to feed that data back into Naptan? Sorry, are you talking about changes in the standard itself? So, like in, in adding new information in the standard? Not necessarily adding new, but correcting, for example, if there was a wrong bearing on a stop or if um, they, you know, a stop had become a defunctional, for example, is there going to be a way for us to, you know, to report that kind of information? That's you know historically been a lot slower to propagate through the current Naptan system. Hmm. So I, I that's definitely something you want to look at, and I think I mean Adrian can talk more about the roadmap, uh, which is still under definition. But the idea of making the updating of existing data easier on the system is is one of the things we're looking at. Um, Adrian, do you want to say something in that space? 
Yeah, I, I don't know to what extent we'd want to change um, the sort of rights of who can and who can't upload data, but certainly having the process of being able to get better feedback and better, quicker changes by making a better system an easier system for that to happen is certainly, mm. you know, something that we we're interested in doing. Um, we, I've been a bit slow in setting this up actually, and I did mention it a, a little while ago, but we are hoping to set some sessions up at the end of October and going into November where we can have a bit of a forum to discuss, you know, where does NAPTAN really need to go to, to meet your needs, to do the things that you need to do. We've got a good idea because we've been out and, and, and spoke to quite a few people, um, but we really do want to to sort of start to have some more in-depth discussions on specific points and data quality obviously being a really important uh, part of that. And how we get the data, is it FTP, is it something else being another interesting uh, conversation we want to have. What sort of feedback you want when you upload a file, you know, like we send emails, but nobody gets them at the moment, you know, not everybody gets them at the moment. You know, how yeah. do we redefine that part of the system? So we really want to get feedback from you before we start spending money building anything. And I, I will pull my finger out and get those that, that session started at the end of the month, hopefully. Oh, just to further add to that, I think it'd be useful because we've had a degree of uh, approach to SEPI about trying to find some contacts and local authorities to do so to create some new NAPTAN stops for me. And it's really hard to find these contacts, even in TFL or Derby or anywhere like that. It'd be good if you almost had a list of who we could approach to do this, uh, if we wanted to make any changes to the physical NAPTAN information. I think that'd be quite a useful, a useful, uh, a useful you know thing that could be shared amongst people uh, as the yeah. contact list. I think that'd be helpful. We just need some sort of progress, don't we? That it's transparent what suggestions are being made, and it's transparent what action has been taken on the back of them. I think that would be helpful because at the moment, unless you know who to contact, I presume it's quite difficult to actually do anything, and you're perhaps not always sure if it's been acted upon or someone's made a decision not to do it because they don't think it needs to be done, but it hasn't been done, and you and you're not in, you know none the wiser to some extent. So that whole process perhaps needs a little bit of a investigation. Can I just add something as a local authority who does manage NAPTAN data? Um, I've recently had a report from Miles um, at the DFT um, mm -hmm. with issues that related to stop bearings or stop names. And the majority I did actually pass through. There were some I did pass back because actually the bearings that they thought, we, there's a road that kind of runs parallel and it's just a bit ambiguous. So um, I think things are working in the background and the DFT are making contact with all of the local mm -hmm. authorities that manage NAPTAN data, um, particularly, you know, Miles has been asking me for local regional contacts. So um, I know that progress is being made that way. But yeah, if anybody wants to make anything in Nottinghamshire, I can do that. <laughs> that's me. And I think that's it. It's just that obviously in this group we can speak and um, people can act upon things, but the, you know, countrywide we don't have, often have the visibility of everybody that's involved, do we? So. Um, perhaps we could have some sort of system, part, build that into part of the system. And ultimately, again, it comes back to user experience. We have feedback on a website or an app about a stop that then filters back to the operator, back to the local authority, and that could potentially be months before a change is made. And often mm -hmm. that's overridden by a trans exchange import that overrides that stop point. So, yeah, it comes back to the user experience, especially as this becomes more open data and more data required to to have that that data set yeah yeah I mean, for, for many authorities for for, for years uh, maintaining naptan has been a bit of a uh, of a nice to do with, or you've passed it on to another authority with the uh, with the obligation on authorities from january to to maintain naptan then um, th there's a good opportunity to, uh, to to get more changes and get more engaged with some of the authorities that have been harder to uh, to, to engage with because suddenly there's a statutory duty on them um, and they're actually going to have to have somebody that's going to do that. So quite often, as you say, Alex, the, the problem is hunting the name of the person to talk to. Um, actually, they're going to have to have somebody now, and they're going to have to have a name. So um, <laughs> that that I think will help um, significantly. <laughs> so um, okay, so as Adrian um, said, um, hoping to to have a number of sessions 
um, in the next um, few weeks to uh, have a bit of a discussion in the forum and, and start to get some some views on uh, um, what people need and want from Naptan going forward. Um, and so um, we'll uh, we'll publicise those um, when we've uh, when we know when they are going to be. Um, so um, hopefully um, you'll be hearing something very soon. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any more on Naptan? No. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Giuseppe. Um, next up, we've got stop announcement name. Now this. Um, comes from the other half of the Bus Service Act um, data requirements to the uh, to the open data. Um, so um, there is a requirement for uh, operators to provide audio visual information. Um, for those of you that have got long memories, um, at the same time as the open data consultation took place, there was a um, consultation on the uh, on the audio visual um, requirements as well. Um, the consultation response um, slight for that is slightly more complicated. There's slightly more questions and some complexity to it, um, and it's never it's not been published yet. A um, couple of years down the line, um, for much of the last year, the the small accessibility team at the department's been busy um, sorting out uh, PS uh, VR um, um, changes and things like that, and uh, and the last minute permits and things like that. Um, they have um, picked up the consultation response and are um, preparing to. Um, uh, present it to um, ministers, I guess, um, over the next couple of months. So um, hopefully it's not too long before that comes out, um, certainly by the end of the um, financial year and maybe even the uh, the calendar year. Um, but uh, depends on, uh, on, on other ministerial priorities but they are working on it again um and um starting to also um think about the regulations um and the expectations on that um which is why um for a while now we've had this this item we did some work last year to identify the the field in that time that um, it was best place to be used for um, for the announce stop name to be announced visually and, and audio. Um, and over the summer, there was a select group of PTIC members that got heads together to work through, um, actually, given we're going to use a uh, short common name, um, how could that be more widely populated? What are some of the challenges um, for that? Um, and um, I do have to say uh, thank you to uh, to Mark in Staffordshire for uh, going uh, above and beyond because not only um, was he involved in the group and um, came up with some good ideas, he's also been through and populated all of his short common names using the rules to uh, to identify um, <laughs> uh, where there are problems um, and. Uh, and how you might go about solving them. So uh, thank you, Mark. Um, and uh, if you need some data to test, Staffordshire, I would suggest is a good place to uh, to go and have a look and see what they've been doing. Um, so um, in terms of populating um, the name, um, because this information is going to be displayed on um, displays inside of a vehicle, um, the size of the display is somewhat limited. Um, there are also uh, a reasonable number of buses that are already equipped with um, displays. Um, and so therefore, um, we have to bear that in mind. 
Um, and so 19 characters seems to fit pretty much all of the um, existing um, displays. There are one or two out there, I say one or two, um, 800, 150 out there, I reckon, um, that are 16 characters. Um, but um, you've got to draw the line somewhere. They're relatively old implementations. Um, so 19 characters. Um, and then um, how do you determine um, what that name should be and fit it in? The obvious thing to do is to take a, uh, an existing common name, which is populated everywhere because it's mandatory. Um, and there are some um, tricks to help um, shorten it semi-automatically um, using some of the uh, abbreviations in um, NAPTAN documentation um, and that seems to work for um, the vast majority of stop names to get them um, to, to 19 characters and something that can automatically be used and a text-to-speech engine can decide that RD should be pronounced spoken as road um, and that sort of thing. Um, Mark has found um, that there needs to be some manual intervention um, with some of the names. School names seem particularly challenging, um, partly because the word school doesn't interestingly have a um, abbreviation in the NAPTAN guidance. We've got colleges and um, all sorts of embankments and roundabouts and synagogues and views all got short, but school doesn't. So it's a bit bit of an oddity. So, um, um, but um, whatever we do nationally, um, I think that locally there's going to need to be some form of local um, agreements about some shortenings um, to help something that makes sense to people, um, but doesn't make sense. Uh, make sense locally, but not necessarily at a national level. Um, so uh, there's still going to be some challenges, but we can get pretty much there. Now, there is a challenge with how do you identify some of those abbreviations if they're not documented as part of regulation and things like that. Um, so school is the obvious one, but um in Staffordshire there's a Reginald something school, um, the name of which is quite long. So um Mark's um shortened that to Reg, um, which works in Staffordshire, but it might not work everywhere else because there might be something else that you might need to shorten for for Reg, um, which is why there needs to be some local things. But the problem is when we come to look at how you legislate or at least produce statutory guidance on how to um, meet the, the obligations, you need some form of canonical document that you can point people to, um, to, to arbitrate. Um, and so um, given they're not in the NAPTAN stuff, we can't easily add anything extra in, which is why there's always gonna need to be some form of local negotiation and decisions made, um, which isn't ideal, but it's the only real practical um, way that we can deal with it. Um, but this um, suggestion, um, because I'd like to get people's views on it and thoughts on it, um, is, is you know one way of making this work. Um, I don't know whether people have got any thoughts and comments on what's suggested in here. No. So we're happy with that suggestion if that ends up in some um, regulations for audiovisual on bus announcement, people are going to be happy that uh, they can uh, they can use this and apply this to their local stop names. 
Hi, Tim. The only, only thing I'd have to say here from a developer point of view, um, working with text to speech engines, um, are often the input required for that is usually very different to something that you would visually display. So, um, for example, I know I've done some work with Alexa, which is um, Amazon's voice engine, and often you'll have to tell it the inflection or similar in the way to pronounce words. So, is that something that's handled by the you know the manufacturer of that of that device, or is that something that we would plan to put into, for example, the Naptown data set on how well, you know, how to pronounce something? Yeah. So. Um... Unfortunately, we're not in a position to, to create a new version of um, Naptan. Um, NetX handles this sort of thing much more effectively. Um, it does actually have um, the required fields for a, for, a, for, a, for an on bus display name and an audio name as well. Um, but given where we've got Naptan, um, and we're not about to, to change it in the next few years. Longer term, though, I think that's maybe something <laughs> slightly different, but we've got mm -hmm. to live with it. Um, it needs going to need to be handled um, locally um, because certainly the people that I've talked to, the, the system suppliers of, of on-bus um, audio-visual displays, there is no common um phonetic and 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 way of of coding mm -hmm. um and and so that you know that's different for each text to speech engine mm -hmm. so unless we were going to do something nationally for every bus stop that agreed how it was going to you know the local pronunciation um which would be really good if we could but you know it's not a you just do it for one and one engine and then everybody understands it um, it's quite difficult, so it's going to need to be done locally. Once you've, once we've got the, you know, the, the name across the piece, then different text-to-speech engines are going to need tweaking, um, just because they're all different, unfortunately. Mhm. Mm no, that's fair. Thanks, Tim. It would be really nice if we could deal with it some other way, um, because some people are going to prefer to to record it. Um, I think he's left, um, but we had a guy from Northern Ireland on here earlier, Richard Bassett, and, and they record everything as, uh, as as MP3s or WAV files and just piece them together um, because of some of the uh, the pronunciation problems and the fact that technology that they've that they're using over there can't cope with some of the pronunciations in the um, in the text-to-speech engines that are available or were available when they put it in. So, um, you know, th there's multiple ways to skin the cat once you've agreed the name. Okay, so we're happy with that. Um, we have to put up with the um, fact that some of the so we'll need some local abbreviations, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Next time you probably see that will be in some form of regulation. So um, you had your option, an opportunity. <laughs> okay. Um, BOD's issue log. Um, so you saw an earlier version of this. Um, this is the... Um, list of issues that between um, ourselves, uh, the operator digital um, group, TIL, um, all uh, feed into um, and uh, department sit down with, uh, with TIL who, um, who pull this together um, on a regular basis and go through it and provide updates. Um, I don't intend to go through it issue by issue. You'll be glad to know, um, unless you're wanting a sleep. Um, but is there anything that people want to pick out particularly from 
the list. Obviously, if people have got issues, as I said before, feed them through. We can add them onto this. Um, it's better to know about them now when they're little problems than before they get to bigger problems later on in implementation. Tim, I may be slow, but was this shared on your email or is it on the website? Is this presumably an update of the log? Oh, did I? Did it? Was it not circulated? Is that why? It I, I, it's, it's, it's on the website. That's where I found it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to quickly scrabble. <laughs> ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um, right. In which case, how can we deal with this? So let's. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, Teresa. Um, wondering why everybody's. Uh... Sorry. No. 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 Okay, so uh, we have got, I don't think that's going to go, no, your, what are you, yes, okay, so um, yeah, he's on the website, I'll make sure it gets email circulated, um, the front sheet's just a header that um, talks about why the document exists and how to update it then um, there's a series of pages with different categories of problem so um, for example uh, if we just pick one of them um, the first one um, was originally identified in the middle of June um, all files are being expired incorrectly um, so there's a problem with expiry dates in zip files um, causing all the rest of the data in a file to expire um, and then um, the ones in yellow by the way are um, ones that have been updated since the last iteration of this document um, and so um, there's a trace there of, of updates where it gets discussed between um, um, TIL and the BODS team um, and in this case there's a fix in staging um, due next week by the looks of this and, and then another um, for, for a related problem uh, in early November. So um, there's uh, different pages for different types of problem um, and it covers off hopefully everything that is known about the problems in, in BODS. Um, but that's why we need to um, report things. Um, because if you're suffering from a problem um, and you don't report it, then, uh, then it's never going to get fixed. Um, is there anything people want to ask or say about that no apologies it wasn't circulated um beforehand Tim. yes is is this document uh, or perhaps a read-only version being made available online somewhere so that we can track what's happening obviously it's um, uh, it's great to see it here but things are changing and it'd be really interesting to kind of you know follow along um as things are progressing um, yes, this this one is in the meeting papers on the pti.org.uk website. Um, I will um, I will check before I make it available every time I get an update um, with with Julie and the Bods team. But um, I don't think they'll have a problem with me putting it online. Um, that's great thank you and uh yeah then uh you can uh you can keep track of it yeah okay in which case um travel line update um so um 
Julie has a um, travel line board this afternoon. So she can't be with us, but I did spend um, some time the other day talking to her about um, the uh, challenges that um, they've got and where they are with things. Um, so um, despite the number of local lockdowns in the north uh, and around the country, um, travel line branded channels are back up to about 85% of customer demand compared to this time last year. So um, that's not bad. Um, that's quite a lot of journey planning and, and customer inquiries. Um, they can track where people go into local lockdown, um, looking at the stats and things like that, because it does dip a bit um, when, uh, when people go into um, lockdown. Um, so um, TNDS are, sorry, TIL is now providing the TNDS for data factory for the Northeast region. Um, it's been doing it for the Northwest for quite some time now, um, but um, the, uh, the Northeast region's handed over the data factory processes to TIL. Um, and um, there's a whole slew of um, sites that are now using the travel line journey planner um, rather than local ones. So uh, travel line Northeast and uh, Nexus uh, are now using the uh, travel line journey planner rather than um, the, uh, the one they used to use previously. Um, City, um, South Yorkshire um, is using the uh, Travel line journey planning, Silver Rail engine, um, along with Transport API user interface now rather than um, um, Trapeze um, and the regional one. Um, travel lines, Southeast, East Anglia, and East Midlands have closed down their journey planners um, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and pointing people to travel line. Um, was, and, was, uh, Tim, was, Tim, was that was that planned? Because that that took me by surprise when I went to look for travel line East Midlands and it wasn't there the other day. Yeah, it, <laughs> and well, it went... was. It was planned, Mike. <laughs> but was it planned this early? I thought it was hanging on till next year or something. Um, so the regions are organization is carrying on to do the data factory um, and compiling your data and you know other people's into into the regional set to put into uh, to TNDS um, but it was actually extended from um, April um, which was when it was originally um, gonna shut down um, because of COVID and also uh, Bob's readiness. Um, so, uh, yeah, it caught a few people by surprise. They'd forgotten. And I guess the communications about shutting down a service um, probably um, didn't reach everybody that it should do. Um, but the closure of these sites is part of the wider strategy to try and get uh, from travel line to try and get some more commonality in functionality and consistency in customer experience. Um, so um, that's also um, supported by Transport Focus and the stuff, questions they've been asking um, people about um, consistency and, and, and the different answers that people have got sometimes. Um, so, um, I, I think it's only the Southwest um, that are operating as a, as a region with their own um, journey planning engine now. I think everybody else. Well, is I, I, I went on the um, West Midlands one, which looks exactly the same as the East Midlands one, which is why I went to it. And it also had East Midlands data in it because, in some ways, it's more useful than the. Um, the uh, 
standardized one which which is in many ways isn't as good <laughs> shall we say um so i don't know if that one's on its its days are numbered as well i don't know you tell me uh i don't know julie didn't say anything about i th i thought they'd moved them they'd switched off before but obviously not from what you're saying so. it seems to be using um i forget the name of the it's a german mens uh yeah i think so yeah but it's it's that one um mm. which has got some features in it that are quite useful right yeah yeah um so um a lot of these services are um shutting down and centralizing partly because of financial um as as authorities need to uh, to reduce costs but also um operators yeah we're going to be doing this in future um and uh, unfortunately the, the the delays to to bods from the original um concept of it being operational at the beginning of 2020 um mean that some of those contracts that have got expiry dates on have timed out before uh, they might otherwise have um uh done in an ideal world um in terms of tnds um til doesn't plan to stop doing tnds um there's still a high demand for it from open data users and a lot of you um use it um at the moment um and it includes non-bus and some of the things that are excluded from bods as well um so um that's gonna be carrying on um there is a decision that til will need to make when bods is delivering a consistent travel uh, trans exchange um format for all all the routes um because some of the uh, data factory elements that that til are running to feed it can stop at that point and they can take data straight from bods into um tnds but uh for the foreseeable future um they're going to need to be running uh, some of the um the data factory at least um there are um longer term challenges for example i know bods or the si for bods um excludes london and scotland and wales and um, scotland and wales have got their own processes in place to start to build national data or yeah yeah national data sets for for wales and scotland um and uh tfl in london obviously make their data openly available anyway um but um there are um some interesting challenges that tal are beginning to to find with um where some of some authorities are stopping supplying data to til whether at, at a regional level or if the regional data factories um close down and til are running it then um authorities are stopping supplying that data as bod starts to to come online which is leaving a few holes um which um julie and the team um amy who's on actually are all busy trying to uh, to patch and to, to uh to work out which operators are missing um and uh trying to get the data direct um and um they're working with operators like reading and uh nottingham city to uh, to get the data direct um through uh through the passenger um open data portals and things like that um so that they're, they're desperately trying to make sure there aren't any holes um but uh it's going to be increasingly hard over the next um, few months to uh, to maintain a uh, a complete TNDS. Um, I suspect. Um, 
and uh, and every time there there is a change, it needs testing and and all of it takes money, um, which um, given TIL is a operator funded operation, uh, you can imagine at the moment that must be quite a challenge. Um, so um, the other service that Traveline provide is the next bus API. Um, so the, uh, the the Siri SM um, inquiries service, the contract for that runs until September next year. Um, so there's a while to go on it, but it will soon be upon us. So um, early next year, um, Julie and the team will start to um, ask people that, that use that service, so the developers that have got apps that are querying it and things like that, um, what the demand is and, and what the appetite is for, um, for for use of that ongoing, particularly as BODS starts to, to provide more and more live data, um, although that's location VM data rather than, uh, than stop uh, centric SM. Um, but um, they're going to need to have a look at you know, the options for it going forward um, and its sustainability. Um, so um, I think that's probably everything that's important from the updates from um, Julie. Um, I'll send you, Teresa, I should have said this at the start before you were madly typing away, I'll send you some of the notes from, from her so you can plonk them straight in. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was nasty of me not to tell you up front. <laughs> You'll get me back later, yeah. Um, any questions about travel line and what they're up to? I'll try and answer or maybe Amy can help. It would be good to, um, to get an understanding of how big the gap is between TNDS where data is not being supplied by the local authorities and it's being kind of plugged by um, yeah, getting data from BODs or from, as you said, Tim, our uh, operators publishing it directly. Um, what is there a kind of an idea that you could share, Amy or Tim, on kind of what that gap looks like at any given time? Can you, can you hear me now? Sorry. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Um, so at the moment we're looking at, um, you know, when you download the TNDS, it comes with a service report that kind of lists all the services that are in for that particular build. And we're looking at adding an extra column onto that um, that will indicate the source of the data, whether it's as it is now or whether it's come from BODs or been supplied by the operator. So that should, um, help to kind of give an indication of of where each piece has come from, if that makes sense. Is there anything in the work that you're doing that gives us an indication as to whether the, all the pieces are there? Oh, in case anything is missing kind of yeah. at all, rather than just the source. Yeah. Um, I'm just worried about the integrity of the data whilst we go from TNDS to, yeah. to bots, but actually people aren't putting stuff into, into TNDS anymore, which means we don't have um, all the data potentially in one place. I appreciate yeah, that's a that job advice, but um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of know what that would be like on a, you know, if we download it, what are we missing? Yeah, I think we'll have to have a think about how best to represent that. I don't think there's anything currently that that we've got kind of missing, but obviously if that does happen, it would be, I'd have to think about how we'd communicate that. Um, but yeah, I can make a note because that's a, a good thing to think about. Thank you. I was going on a similar th on a similar theme. I was going to say that a, a lot of this stuff in well, there is data in Travel Line that it, it appears not to be a gap, but may well be incorrect. Because I certainly think that's the case for Leicestershire. Because I think Leicestershire County Council have stopped doing updates, or they may have restarted now, but they may not have caught up. So you may, if you look at timetable information, for example. It could well be wrong. Is is there any indication in travel line as to when it is correct up until? You know, if I download a timetable, how do I know it's 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 um valid? 
Right. But there's there's a real big problem um, with with scheduled data um, in many parts of, of the country as operators, you know, removed all their services at the start of lockdown and then more slowly ramped them back up. Authorities and operators even just keeping up to date with uh, with all the changes in the you know in timetable systems and and supplying data to everybody that needs it um so that it's it's much harder position than than i think probably anybody's ever had in you know in the whole life of of doing this of 20 odd years um, yeah i sort i sort of so, understand that but i don't i don't think it's it's apparent on the websites that well that that information may be suspect. There's little ticker things that go around sort of saying, please, you know, be a bit careful or double check with the operator or, but it's um, it's not great. And I don't, I don't think, and you know, if you want to look say an Arriva timetable at the moment, certainly up until recently there, virtually none of their timetables were available on their website. Cause I think they have got a major problem on that. But um, I don't know if that's solved yet, but probably not <laughs> which is why you might look, tend to look at travel line but then you might get the wrong information from that as well but yeah i think it, i suspect it's as good as uh, anybody's got um and i know it's better than some operators websites a river aside um so um i think you know that they they they're doing their their best um as is everybody and um it, it will catch up particularly as um the uh the dispensation for short notice changes starts to uh starts to roll back and people start to have to plan and, and actually you know register services properly again um that's that's been a lot of the problem over the last few months um do you, is, do you know uh, what the dispensation it, looks like now or what it's going to change to um well from the end of the the year change the 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 covid changes um dispensation expires so any changes after that will have to go through the the normal registration process it'll go back to normal okay yeah yeah i heard it might be extended yeah, but i'm not sure well <laughs> get, get Given the talk about new lockdowns and things like that, I suspect it might well be. But um, yeah. yeah, as of this morning, it was the end of the year. Fair enough. As of tomorrow morning, it might be something different. But your crystal ball might be better than mine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any more on travel line? Just another one, quick one, Tim. If um, is Traveline going to change the process? Because at the moment it's only doing taking transit change 2.1, or it seems to be. Are they going to be changing the process to take the latest version of the BODS, if we call it the BODS version? It's just otherwise, if local authorities do carry on if they're producing data and they're submitting to BODS, they'll end up doing it in two different formats, won't they? Um, Amy, you can take. 2.5 now if an operator can if somebody can supply it can't you sorry hi um i think we're continuing to yeah we publish um tnds in 2.1 and 2.5 um and as far as i know we're continuing to to do that process um i do something supposed to be happening in BODS that is taking the 2.1 and putting it into the new 2.4, but I don't know if that's true or if that exists, but that was something I'd heard about. I was, I was just, yeah, I was just thinking about the submissions to be honest, Amy, because I know we had some files fail because it, they came out in 2.4 format and it couldn't do right. the Northwest process. So it's whether that element is changing even before you get it into the TMDS. That's what I was querying, to be fair. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, the other way, right, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think that's one where we'll say, Amy, can you get back to, to Ian then on uh, on what versions you, you'll accept for import? Yeah, yeah, we can discuss that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any more on travel line? No, okay, um, in which case EU standards development, um, the um, update to Siri um, we've discussed previously is progressing well um the the revised um excess days um are um available on um github there's still a few um change requests to uh to implement but pretty much they're all uh, all the all the hard ones complex ones are done um and we're now in the process of uh, of trying to make sure the documentation matches um the technical code um and that will keep the um siri group busy for the next few months before um submission to uh to send for formal release um it'll get to send before the end of the year it'll get a formal release through the send process um some point next year with a following wind and all being well um but uh but technically siri 2.1 will be available by the end of the uh end of the year um and draft documents will be made available on whatever we do as a replacement to nick Knowles's site um for those of you that have uh, that have used it for the last um 15 years suddenly when it's not available you realize quite how much you refer to it um so um that's siri um there is a update to um netx and trans model um taking place um to um update them to include new modes so um scooters and electric trikes and whatever unicycles or, or whatever the latest um urban mobility um concept is um that they're, they're not covered at the moment and so um a more flexible approach is being included in it um it that work has been done as part of the siri update um already um but uh but netx and trans model are being updated to cope with new modes um that those again will be released next year um and um the um transnational project group to encourage um adoption of um, standards like Siri and NetEx um, that's got um, European Union funding um, data for PT um, is up and running um, and starting to um, develop the, the, the work plan. Um, they have a first workshop to look at what people want what materials people want to help um adoption um on the 5th of november so just under a month away um you can um book for that um anybody can get involved in that um and um that data for pt group is also and starting to collect data from um, each of the uh, European countries um, to look at creating a European um, passenger information profile um, that can be common across um, Europe to allow um, the transfer of data more easily between um, 
uh, international journey planners. Um, okay. Um, I think that's probably all that's going on in Europe. Um, any questions about any of the European standards and what's going on? No. Okay. Um, issues log. Um, at the moment, we've only got one um, issue on the um, PTIC log, which was a um, request for a change to Siri to include fuel type so you can track um, the fuel type for a vehicle in, in real time. Um, that is available in the XSD on GitHub now. Um, that's been coded and um, documentation is uh, is underway. So that one is nearly closed. Um, is anybody got any other any new issues for standards um, that they want to uh, raise? If there are, then on the PTIC website, there's a form to fill out um, that captures all the information that we need to, uh, to, to send it through into the right working groups and things. No, okay. Um, is there any other business? Um, I guess uh, this is where Keith, who's just um, put something in the um, chat, would uh, would 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 say what he's put in there about React having a bus stop wiki, um, and they're wanting people to uh, to to help test and refine it. Um, so that's a commercial from uh, from React. Um, no, no, any other business? No, okay. Um, when do we want to meet again? Um, traditionally, it would be February if we take the three times a year cycle, but it feels like with a lot going on before at, at the end of the year with, with BODs, um, we probably ought to meet in a couple of months' time, just before the end of the year in early December to um, um, make sure that we know what's going on and get the latest updates. Does that seem about I, right? I would second that, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll uh, get our heads together. Um, May and Teresa, and we'll come up with a date um, in early December. Okay. Um, Chris, Christmas party edition. Yeah, well, yeah, Chris, silly Christmas hats and jumpers, uh, mandatory. <laughs> you really want <laughs> Christmas party, yeah. We'll get more work done this year in the in the in the run up to Christmas with the lack of Christmas parties, won't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. In which case, if there's nothing else, thank you all for uh, joining and getting involved, um, and um, see you in early December, if not before. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.